While watching the online lectures, be sure to use the attached packet to take notes on. You'll find the link for the packet here at the title page for each chapter. Click on it, then print out the packet. These gray boxes in the online lectures refer to the slides and pages in the packet. In this online lecture, we're going to discuss SP3 hybridization, and that's going to help explain how carbon makes four sigma single bonds. And to understand this, let's talk about why we even need to do SP3 hybridization. If you remember from a previous online lecture, this happened to be the electronic configuration of carbon, which, remember, enabled us to conceptualize him as this structure right here. This structure, remember, represents how the electrons are configured about carbon, specifically which orbitals they reside in. However, here's the reality. An extremely popular organic molecule is this molecule right here, CH4. And notice this central carbon is making four sigma bonds, one to each hydrogen in this molecule. If this molecule exists, then does the electronic configuration we see here match up with this reality? What we'd actually see is that it doesn't. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Remember, the bond in this molecule, of course, would be nonpolar covalent bonds. In other words, a sharing of electrons. Which means if we think of carbon's electronic configuration as what we see right here, then it's possible that this unpaired electron would want to bond or match up with another electron. So anytime we see an electron by himself in an orbital, that's an electron that has the ability to make a bond. So if that's the case, it looks like this carbon right here could at most only make two bonds. Which means, for instance, we could bond one hydrogen right here to make one sigma bond. We'd have that overlap. And we'd make another sigma bond here with this overlap. But think about that. If that's the case, then this is the only bonding that could be achieved. Because notice the remaining electrons in this electronic configuration has the electrons already paired up with another electron in the orbital. These electrons in the green circles here have no incentive to bond to other electrons. Which begs the question then, how does carbon make four sigma bonds in the first place? Well, the way it does it is it simply alters its electronic configuration. And let me show you what I mean by that. First of all, we're only going to be concerned with the valence electrons. That is, remember the electrons in the most outer shell, because these are the electrons involved in bonding. And notice what we have to work with here in this shell. We have the 2s orbital right here, and remember we have the 3p orbitals right here. And let's do this. Let's remove the electrons here for a second. And what we're going to do is simply combine the s and the 3p orbitals together, or in other words, hybridize them. If you combine all four of these orbitals together, imagine you have one big crazy orbital that's one part s and three part p. And let's say we take this massive orbital and simply cut it up into four equal size orbitals. What you end up with is four orbitals of equal size, and now their new labels are sp3 simply because in order to create them, you needed one s orbital to combine with three p orbitals. Notice that means we totally rearranged the second shell of this carbon. In fact, he no longer looks like this. It now looks like this. This becomes a new electronic configuration for carbon with these four sp3 orbitals representing these orbitals right here. And notice their locations. They're all equally level, which means all four of these orbitals are equal in energy. Now, there's one last step that we have to do here, is put the electrons back in the orbitals. But in this particular case, we're going to put one electron in each orbital. So, what you see in front of you here is simply the sp3 hybridized electronic configuration of carbon. What we're learning here is that carbon has simply the ability to change his orbital arrangement in this way. So, in summary, what this means then is, if this is the original electronic configuration of carbon, 
This is his orbital view. Here is his diagram below. What we're simply doing to him is SB3 hybridizing him to this new orbital arrangement. Now remember, we did nothing with the 1s orbital, so he still has that. And he still has the two electrons in it. So the diagram would still be 1s2 down here. However, it's that second shell that we've rearranged. We now think of it as having four sb3 hybridized orbitals. So that means there'd be one here like this. There'd be another one here, which means the diagram below would have another one like this. We'd also have the third one shaped like this, making our diagram this right here. And then we'll add the fourth one right here, completing our diagram below as this. Now, there's something else structurally we should know about this. Remember, electrons repel each other. They're like charges, which means the electrons in these sp3 orbitals would like to be as far apart from each other as possible. So if you calculated that geometry, what you would end up with is that these orbitals are 109.5 degrees apart. This is going to come in handy later. For your organic chemistry tests, you have to know the orbital description of an sp3 hybridized carbon and its electronic configuration. So you'll need to memorize this structure on the right. Now, while we're looking at this, there's something that I want to point out. And that is the energy level of the sp3 orbitals compared to the unhybridized p and 2s orbitals. Remember, we know energy increases as you go up on these diagrams. And notice where the sp3 hybridized orbitals are. They are lower than the 2p orbitals, but they're higher than the 2s orbitals. So their energy level is between the 2p and the 2s orbitals. So you can kind of think of it this way. There is an incentive for carbon to adopt sp3 hybridization because overall it leads to lower energy, and lower energy always equates to more stability. So now let's revisit our molecule here. Now we can make sense of this molecule, which happens to be called methane. To understand his bonding, remember we think of the carbon in the center as being sb3 hybridized, which means his orbital arrangement looks like this. I'm ignoring the 1s orbital for right now. I'm only focusing on the sb3 orbitals. And again, we know that the angle between them is 109.5 degrees. And notice our arrangement has one electron unpaired in each orbital, which means we're able to sigma bond now to four hydrogens in total, like this. So this is how carbon can make four single sigma bonds. And not only that, we now know the bond angles of this molecule. They are simply 109.5 degrees. This helps us understand the three-dimensionality of this molecule. So let me show you a sample problem here. This is the kind of insight we have now. Sample problem one says, give the orbital picture of the following molecule. This molecule happens to be called ethane. What we would do here is first, let's spread this out to get a better look here. And let's consider each carbon to be sp3 hybridized, which remember his orbital description would look like this. And therefore, the carbon on the right would also have the same arrangement. Notice right here, we would have a head-on overlap between the electron in one of the sp3 hybridized carbons and the other sp3 hybridized carbon. That explains how these two carbons are bonded together. And it also explains that it would be there for a sigma bond because these orbitals are head-on overlapping. The rest of the sigma bonds in this molecule can be explained by simply overlapping an H atom with his 1s orbital with the sp3 hybridized orbitals. It's very important for us to conceptualize organic molecules in this way. This is going to help us master organic chemistry, because later on, when we're trying to understand how a certain molecule reacts or behaves, the answer might lie in its particular orbital arrangement. So in summary here, Make sure you know, again, the orbital description and the electronic configuration of an sb3 hybridized atom.